The motor effect is one of the most important things in modern life. Without it, you wouldn't have any electrical devices um, like laptops, uh, Xboxes, TVs. Um, they all need fans to work, which rely on electricity to spin them uh, to cool your devices down. Now, the motor effect itself is a little bit tricky, but in definition terms, it is a force experienced by a wire or any current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field. So in the example down here, we are going to have a straight piece of wire and there is going to be a force acting on it in a certain direction. So for this example, the current is going to be flowing towards the kind of bottom left of the screen, um, which is going to become important later. But if you remember from a previous video, we know um, that with all uh, electric wires, there uh, are currents flowing through them. There are magnetic fields around them in very small circular shapes like this. So what happens is the real explanation for this is that this field interacts with the permanent magnetic field, the permanent magnetic field being the one between the north and the south poles here. So when that happens, the wire will uh, jump. It will jump, in this case, upwards. Um, but let's get a definition down for why that happens. This is because the two magnetic fields kind of interact or kind of cross over with each other, basically, which causes some motion. Now, how can we go about predicting which way the wire is going to move? To be able to do that, we need to know something called Fleming's left-hand rule, which is the diagram down here. Apologies for the state of the diagram. Um, it's very hard to demonstrate with a paper because uh, it's a 3D diagram. But essentially, if you stick out your left hand, uh, your thumb and forefinger should be like pointing a gun uh, 90 degrees to each other. Then stick out your middle finger or your second finger. So it's a 90 degrees to both of those. So it's kind of pointing uh, towards you. Now, the first finger, um, if we have in the direction of the field, um, so that's going north to south. So in our diagram, that's left to right. Our second finger, our middle finger, and um, we call it the second finger to help us remember it stands for current, it goes from positive to negative. So in our diagram, that's kind of going towards us. If those two things are aligned in that direction, then our thumb will point in the direction that the wire will move in. So for example, here, your thumb should be pointing upwards, so therefore indicating the wire is going to go upwards. If I wanted to flip the wire's direction around, I would have to change one of the other two factors. So for example, uh, if I wanted the wire to move down, I could either flip the fields around, so reverse the field direction so that the left and north, so the left and right, north and south poles are switched over. Or I could switch the current around, so it's going from uh, kind of toward the top right of the screen instead of the bottom left. If I did either of those things, then I would have the wire moving in the downwards direction instead of upwards. How could I go about increasing the force on the wire? Well, there's a handy equation uh, that we use for figuring this out. Um, and obviously, you don't need to remember the equation, but the equation looks like this. Um, it states that the force on the wire could be calculated by multiplying three factors together. Factor one is something called the magnetic flux density, which is essentially the magnetic field, times by the current, times by the length of wire um, that's in the field. So the units, uh, we should know forces with newtons, uh, current is in amps or amperes, length of wire has to be in metres, not centimetres, um, and magnet magnetic flux density is measured in teslas. Normally it's quite a low number, so you'll quite commonly see milli or micro tesla, so that's a thousandth or a millionth of a tesla. Now if I were to increase any of these things, they would result in the force increasing, or if I were to decrease any of them, that would result in the force increasing. Now, how does this all link to our uses from earlier? So this is what an electric motor looks like. Um, and this is what you'll find in your hair dryers, your electric cars, uh, electric drills, fans, etc. Instead of one piece of wire, we've now got a coil of wire. So a coil being kind of a loop inside the magnetic field. It's connected to a power supply, uh, which has a positive and negative sign. Um, and I'm going to draw in the arrows to show which way the current's flowing. Sometimes questions won't do this, so be aware of that. It's always helpful to draw them in. So we're using Fleming's left-hand rule. Um, on the left-hand side, the current's going kind of towards us, so it's going to move up, same as before. On the other way, we flip the current round, and so the force flips. So we've got one going up, one going down. It's going to rotate. Um, from our point of view in a clockwise, clockwise direction. How would you explain this in a question? It looks exactly the same as an explanation as the motor effect, so a force experienced by a wire in a magnetic field, but you'd say because it's turning, there's something called a resultant moment or an overall moment, which is a turning force, meaning it turns. Now, 
as well as that the wire currently will go back and forth it won't make a full rotation uh, because we don't have something called a split ring commutator which I know is an absolute mouthful but is worth remembering because otherwise this whole thing doesn't work now uh, side on view is the best way of um, describing it um, so if I was to view this side on the two wires I've got going in and out aren't connected to uh, each other necessarily they are connected to the split ring commutator which as you may imagine it rotating it's going to break off the current and flip it from positive to negative every half turn so it reverses the current every half turn as it does that it keeps the coil turning continuously stops it stopping and going back the way it came so very important piece